What's going on, everybody? It's a little bit out of breath. I just come down this hill. I ain't supposed to be down here. But this is a place I want to tell y'all about. Very spooky. The last time I was here, been about 86. Uh, somebody's been here or something. Not too long ago. But, uh, I got scared out of here. Me and my buddies back in 86. This has grown up a whole lot more than it used to be since then. Quite a bit. Uh, actually, I've got three stories. To, they all tie in together to tell you about this place. But, uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to tell you all three stories or not. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to get to the place of the first story. Looks like it's right through this way. Like I say, it's been a long time since I've been back in here, in this area. We used to fish this when I was younger. This is a place that the Indians stayed away from. It's hidden. You can see the cliff runs all the way around, straight up and down basically. And then you've got the water on that side boxes us in. But uh, back in the early 1800s, there was this older man. And if I remember right, his name was Isaac Johnson. Now I could be telling you wrong. Don't quote me on none of that. Briars out. And there's not a lot of people that knows these stories. Especially this story. But uh, I think it was around 1890, maybe, right, right in there, give or take 10 years. But uh, there was this old mountain man, and he was a wanderer. There's a pretty good little game trail right here. And he wandered from place to place, oftentimes. And uh, he wandered down here and stayed some. I think he was in trouble with the local police from time to time. And he was just a mountain man who really didn't have a home. He just kind of wandered around surrounding counties. Well, he got down here one day and he, as crazy as this sounds, heard something talking to him from where we're gonna go here in just a second, hopefully. He heard a voice seemed to call his name while he was supposedly sitting here fishing. As you can see, there's a lot of little holes, nooks, and crannies for a bobcat or anything to go back in. And actually, this is the area. And I think there used to be a cave here, if you go by the stories. Anyway, he heard something calling his name from down in here. And it spooked him. But he come over to these rocks. Now this has been passed down in my family. He come over to these rocks in this area right here. Now I don't know which rock he came to, but supposedly the voice was emanating from this rock and he thought it was something down in the rock the story goes that it once told him that it was a spirit trapped inside these boulders and then at another time supposedly told him that it was the boulder so the townspeople who knew about it thought that he was insane and that he was a drunk but he swore up and down, he would come down here and he would have conversations with whatever was in these rocks or in this cave system right here that's collapsed. But he would come down here and he would actually carry on conversations about the politics of the time, the things that were going on in the world at the time and different things like that. 
Sorry I'm whispering, but I don't know why you see me. Those over there was not built back when I was young. That was just a field, nothing more. But he would have conversations with these rocks or whatever was in the rocks. It actually knew his name. It would call to him. And as he would make his travels from around the local area loop, he always gravitated back to this place. And he started bringing people down here. Now, some people didn't hear anything once they got here. But there was other people who actually backed him up on his claims. That a voice would come from these rocks. And sometimes the voice would be friendly to him and almost warming. And then the next time it would be evil and would threaten him, threaten to hurt him. Now, I know all this sounds crazy. And I do, I've never seen no voice or heard no voice from these rocks at all. Although I have seen and heard things down here. But uh, this kept on with the man. He got to where he was infatuated with it. Now, I'm just telling you what was told to my kin and, and their great-grandfathers back from that long ago. The man actually got to coming down here and carrying on a conversation with something within these rocks that he could not see. So, I think this went on for maybe two years, three, till finally he just got to where he stayed down here. And... Uh, him being homeless hobo mountain man living off the woods you know this was something for him to talk to or somebody because as i understood it he was a very lonely man a lot of people thought he was an alcoholic and that's where he was hearing this stuff from but he got to staying down here and like i say he brought some friends down and and they heard the voices coming from the rocks too other people didn't but it got to the point that it almost started driving this man mad people started worrying about him in this community uh, they thought Isaac was really really losing his mind so he brought a bunch of people down here one day this is how the story goes seemed like there were like 10 people and uh, the rocks wouldn't talk back or the voice wouldn't talk back to him and uh, the people started laughing at him making fun of him and uh, Supposedly how the story goes is finally the rocks cried out to the people and told them they are the ones that are the fools. Well, this scared the people that was down here. Like I say, it was eight or ten people. Actually scared them. Some of them thought he had somebody planted in the rocks. A few of them went to look around the rocks itself when it seemed like that the rocks started calling their name out and started telling stuff on them in the community. Started telling secret stuff that people wouldn't want him to know so right away then they thought the man had been doing witchcraft so everyone left they all left well that particular evening he stayed down here with the rock like he would do commonly and i reckon the next day they found him down here dead no apparent cause of death nobody knew what it was but they said the look on his face actually looked like that he was scared to death he was laying on top of the ground with his eyes wide open and a big frightened look on his face. Somewhere right in here where I'm standing, just away from these rocks. Now, if you know anything about the David Pilatus stories, you know what he says about boulders and boulder fields and how mysterious they are. Well, no one ever heard, as far as I know, heard anything from the rock or whatever was in the rock again. So years later, let's advance to uh, about the 1920s, 25, somewhere in there. This family, there used to be a house on top of that hill, and there's actually another house standing there now. But it was right up there in that area. They had a daughter, and she wasn't quite right. You know, I, I don't want to use the R word. I, I don't know if she was inbred. That's a theory. I don't know if uh, maybe it's Down syndrome. But back then, uh, stuff like that felt like it brought a shame on the family. And that could have been because it was some inbred. But uh, anyway, all that aside, the girl wasn't quite right. And the father was ashamed of her. And it seemed like the older she got, the worse it 
would show up on her. So by the time that she hit her teens, her early teens, the father put her down here. He moved her out of the house. He couldn't keep her head in the house no more. And he put her down here where she couldn't go nowhere. She couldn't climb up the steep bank and she couldn't get across the river. So they put her down here. Uh, understood that he throwed up some boards for her to kind of have a little small shelter. And I know all this sounds very cruel. It wasn't me at done it. Keep that in mind. And uh, they would take the what they didn't eat, the scraps off their table, and they would rake it into a dish, into a bowl. And the mother would bring it down here and feed the poor little girl. And uh, she stayed down here for several years, is what I was told. And basically grew up down here with them bringing her food, or they'd even go as far as just throw the food off the bank. So this girl had very little people skills, very little language. And uh, she stayed uh, maybe five years, something like that down here. But uh, here's something over there. But it got to, nobody knew she was really down here. And uh, she was afraid of the rock story. Of course, they'd heard all that. And uh, the father said, that's nothing to worry about. The guy was insane. He was a drunk. Rocks don't talk to people. Go down there. You're gonna stay down there. Don't worry about that. Don't cry. To, don't try to cross the river. It's very deep right here. And then on the other side of those woods, you don't want to be over there. So the girl stayed down here, lived down here, uh, dug up worms, ate worms, ate whatever she could find. But as the story goes, that one night she was heard talking to somebody down here. So as they looked off the bank. They could see her down here walking with someone. And uh, this got to be an every night occurrence. The mother would come down here and ask her, who, who was you talking to last night? She would say, there isn't, I was not talking to nobody. I was talking to myself. I'm lonely. So uh, this went on and this went on. And she was observed talking to this older lady, which they went on to believe now was a witch. Because the... Uh, Baker Holler Witch's family is not very far from where we're standing now. So they tied all this together. That she had been down here, and wherever this other woman come from, they don't know. Could it have been whatever was in that rock years and years earlier? I don't know. But they knew she was down here, and they knew she was talking to a woman. And it looked like she was cloaked. So it got to where they would hear laughter coming from down here and then you would see a fire built down here and the girl had no fire making skills and had nothing to make a fire with so it got to where the mother would come out of the nighttime and the father and then they thought we're going to, have to do something about this now you know we can't have her practicing witchcraft or have these people on our property so they didn't know what they were going to do. They felt like she was an, a shame to the family. She, she was, a lot of people didn't even know she existed, the little girl. So they felt like that, like I say, she was an embarrassment. So they decided they're going to have to do something about this little girl who's not very little now. She's probably up in her years as a teenager now. So they devise a plan. They're going to come down here and they're going to get her. They're going to take her off to Knoxville to a insane asylum down there and just drop her off because they don't, nobody know who she was, where she come from. She would never be able to get back here, tell them where she lived. So, uh, they come down here to get her early one morning and she was gone. Now, here's where the story changes from two different versions I've heard. One story tells that she was gone and she was never seen again. And then the other story tells that she was found dead, that she had actually froze to death inside that little shed. 
and that she is buried in that graveyard where I go walking around. And that graveyard is just about 300 yards from the top of that hill up there where I was pointing. So I don't know which way the story goes. So that's the second part of the story. And lastly, probably about in the, I don't know, 50s, 60s, maybe even early 70s, this place was so hidden that the uh, Wiccan people got to coming down here. And they got to practicing their witchcraft and uh, doing stuff down here unsightly and ungodly stuff conjuring up who knows what down here but it got to be a place that people was afraid to come to i'm afraid to be down here right now uh, after the stuff that i'd seen and i'll tell you about that here in just a second stuff i heard but they would hear laughter emanating from down here years later after the wiccans got done supposedly there was a human sacrifice made down here of a of a child but now none of this is, you know, I can't back any of this up. This is all stories passed down. But it's funny because everybody in town had the same story. But, uh, so the Wiccan people and the devil worshippers, they claimed this place for quite a while. And, uh, it was a place made evil. If it wasn't already evil, it, it was made evil. And they actually thought the spirit of the girl was still down here. So that's why they gathered here. And used to, when I was down here in the 80s, you would find all kinds of stuff tied in the trees. Uh, stuff hammered in the trees like like uh, raccoon skulls, goat skulls. You'd see all this stuff. And this was in the 80s. It was like, this is about when it quit. But you'd see this stuff down here. So fast forward to 1986. I'm on my way to come fishing here with a few of my buddies when I meet them on the road. I can walk here from where I live, especially when I was younger. I meet them on the road headed back just a little bit after dark. We're going to do some catfishing. They're scared to death. They say that there was something down here that was talking to them and that on the other side of the creek, the river over there, that they saw a cloaked woman standing over there laughing at them. And they ran. They were scared. Well, I didn't come fishing down here because I didn't like the story. And I sure didn't want to be by myself. So a few nights later, I had another buddy with me. Now, these boys was pretty tough boys in the neighborhood. Played football and done a lot of stuff together. And to see them crying, I, I kind of, tears in their eyes, I kind of knew something was up. But I thought, well, maybe, you know, maybe they didn't know what they said. So, me and my buddy come down here to go catfishing one night, right over here in this very spot. I'll show you where we were at. We've got the lantern sitting there and our bait. And we're fishing. And a few minutes into our fishing trip, and this is probably around 11 o'clock at night, because, like I said, I had to work. So I'd got off from work, and we came fishing. We were sitting right down here, right there, right there on the bank, and it, it chills me to tell this story, especially being here right now, but uh, we heard laughter, and this laughter was coming from all around us, and at first we thought maybe it was some of the guys playing a trick on us, but it was a woman's laughter. And let me tell you what, if I've never been scared day in my life, I was frozen with fear, could not move. This was the most sinister, evil laughter I had ever heard. And it almost was paralyzing. So when we do get to where we're able to move and get up, as we're headed out that way right there, we see a cloaked figure way off against the against the bank and it's just standing there but it's on the trail as we have to go out the only way out of here so i'm like jess what, what are we gonna do and you could hear that laughter but it's what was weird the laughter wasn't coming from the direction wherever this thing was standing or this person it was coming from over here behind us right around here basically all around us 
So we left our fishing poles, we left our tackle box, and we went straight up that bank right there. Now it may not look like much from down here, but let me tell you what, trying to climb that thing at a dead run, even if you are 16 years old, it's more than I wanted to do. So we got out of here, we made it out of here. As soon as we got to the top, the laughter stopped. Well, our stuff was still down here. Our poles, our tackle box, you know, back then you didn't get that every day. You just ain't gonna go buy you another one. There was no Bass Pros to buy one of it. So we come back right in the middle of the day to get our stuff. So when we come back here, we got down here to get our stuff. And in the daytime, and it's dark down here in the daytime because you're in this holler, we could faintly, faintly hear it sound like something chanting like chanting or or even some kind of backwards talk i mean it wasn't loud and if you made a noise or talked you couldn't hear it but it was very very faint so we got our stuff and we got out of here but i did want to come down here and show you all this i'll never be back down here again i promise you People swear they hear whispers coming from down in here when they've been down here. All this was from long ago when I was down in here. That they hear whispers. They can hear stuff talking, hear stuff laughing. The river that comes by here, it is all open until it gets right around that bend. And as it comes right through here and down that way. And my friends used to work at a tubing place. And people would come back on the tubes and they would tell them that they would hear somebody over here screaming. There's a bridge right down the river right there that crosses over. And they would tell them it's in the holler right before you get to the bridge that there's a woman screaming. I swear I just saw something up there in the top right hand corner about at the bank. I don't know, maybe we'll watch it back and see if I caught it on film, I don't know what it was. But anyway, they would swear they hear a woman down here screaming. Uh, others would say that there would be somebody standing at the river and they would be cloaked as they went by. Seemed like this cloaked figure played a theme, but only after the girl that was put down here to live died or disappeared. So, don't know if it was her don't know if it was her spirit. Don't know what it was, but this is an evil, evil place that even the Indians didn't want anything to do with. Some of my friends told me that they thought the clan held meetings down here too because uh, they would see the fire, but I actually think it was probably more or less the, the Wiccan people that they saw instead of the clan being down here. But, like I say, the Indians, I don't remember, they had a name for this place, but I don't remember what it was. But any place that is in a hollow next to water like this, it stays dark all day, they feel is evil. You know, most of the Indians traveled by river or camped by river, had their communities by the river, but right here, down here in this, nothing. And it just seems awful dead and quiet down here right now. Matter of fact, now I gotta go back up that bank. But the old house stood right up there. There's another house there now. I don't know if you can barely see the top of it. And then right past it is just more woods. But, uh, and the man considered the girl an abomination. That's the word that was used to describe her. And she was put down here. Now, I could keep recording, I guess, as I try to find my way out of here. But it's strange that all three of these stories tie in to this one place. This place of evil. As you can see, everything's just... I don't know if you if how it's coming through this phone, but it just is dreary. Uh, dread it's just a place you feel like you don't want to be at and there's actually used to be a trail right there it goes up through there through those briars 
So I guess I'll get out from here, guys. And I will, ouch, I will catch you all later. If I get out of this hellhole. <laughs>